This entitled mum has set out to ruin everyone's day at an amusement park. And of course, she has to do it in the most cliche way possible, declaring something to be racist. What insane reason does she have for such an accusation? Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. So here is a fun story. My husband and I are pretty private and rarely use social media. He doesn't have Instagram and I have a private account with only a few close friends and family and usually post pictures of food or nature and that sort of thing. I never post pictures of my kids. I will sometimes post a story with them, but I control who gets to see them and the context of said story. On the other hand, my brother-in-law considers himself somewhat of an influencer, has a few thousand followers and posts several times a day. He also happens to be gay. Recently, we had my daughter's birthday party in our house. Brother-in-law was invited and was staying over. Husband reminded him that we like our privacy and not to post pictures of our kids or where you could identify our house or neighborhood. The next day, I get a message from a friend telling me to check brother-in-law's Instagram. Sure enough, there were at least 10 pictures and videos of my kids clearly identifying them. Hanging out with their favorite uncle. A picture of him in our pool with the caption, lounging at husband and OP's house. A video of him running with the caption, early morning run through neighborhood. And a pic where you can see our cars and license plates clearly visible in the background. I was furious and sent brother-in-law a message. Hey, we told you not to post pictures of our kids, house and neighborhood. We are not comfortable with this. Please delete them. He left me at scene, but did not reply. Five minutes later, I get a phone call from my mother-in-law. Now keep in mind that brother-in-law is 26. So this means that a grown man went crying to his mommy. The conversation went something like this. I tried my best to recreate it. Why were you trying to control what brother-in-law posts to his Instagram? I just asked him to delete pictures with our kids. Why, are you ashamed of him? Of course not. But you both know that we don't like having pictures of our kids online. Don't you see that he has suffered enough? He needs to know that his family loves and supports him. His followers need to know too. Brother-in-law knows we love and support him. This has nothing to do with that. This is important for him. Me getting really frustrated. I know, but our privacy is important to us. If brother-in-law can't respect that, then he will no longer be invited to our home or permitted to be around the kids. You've ruined my family. I hope you are proud of yourself. She hangs up and proceeds to call my husband to scream some more. He of course tells her exactly the same thing I did. Here is the messy, complicated history. Brother-in-law is not easily identifiable as gay at first glance. In high school, he was a popular athlete who got good grades, had plenty of friends, and spent his time partying. When he came out at the beginning of college, he was quickly embraced by both his friends and the LGBTQ community. As far as we know, he never got bullied for it. So here is what mother-in-law is talking about. My parents-in-law are deeply religious and they are definitely not okay with brother-in-law being gay. They go to mass every day and pray for his conversion. A priest advised them to keep brother-in-law close and shower him with love. And they interpreted this as spoiling him even further, never going against him in any way. Brother-in-law is fully aware of this, strings them along, telling them that he is confused and takes advantage of the situation. He once got them to go on an expensive European vacation because he needed to reconnect with his parents. I know that it must suck for brother-in-law that his parents don't accept him for who he is. And I also know that people in the LGBTQ community have it way harder than the rest of us. However, none of this justifies their crappy behavior and their complete lack of respect for husband and myself and our privacy concerns. If you're a 26 year old man and you can't fight your own battles, I don't know what hope you have for the future. At what point can you address conflict by yourself, you know, without the help of your mother, and sort out your issues face to face? You could understand if he made the mistake at first, especially if he just regularly posts on Instagram, but they specifically told him, hey, we don't want any of these kinds of pictures. He says okay, and then he does it anyway. Just delete the pictures. What do you really have to gain by keeping them there when what you have to lose is the relationship with your family members? The cast. EA Entitled Aunt. Even calls herself my mum. Heck no. EU Entitled Aunt's boyfriend. Also has no spine and just blabbers after EA. D, dad, four years younger than EA. G, granny, EA's and D's mum, and of course me. 
If I'd write about everything she's done over the last 22 years, boy we'd still be here in a week. A little bit of background story. I'm living with my grandma and my dad. Dad isn't always around since he's often overseas. And I'm no contact with my mum since little over a year. We're all on bad terms with my aunt. Even mentioning her is traumatic for all of us. This will be important later. So my aunt is entitled to everything my grandma owns. My grandma owned two houses back then, one for each child. EA already got her house way back when she wasn't even 25. The other one is the one Granny, Dad and I are living in. Four days ago, my grandma had a minor stroke and had to go to the hospital. I had a job interview that day so I couldn't be around, but I checked in with my dad who was with her every 10 minutes or so. After I was done, I couldn't catch my dad, so I had to call my aunt. And now, it begins. She had to pick up clothes for her, and coincidentally, looked through all of our rooms. She just screamed like a banshee how disgusting we are, and how we are not to be like her, because she is the only responsible adult in this family. And nobody wants to talk to her since we're all afraid of the truth. Also, I have to be there in an instant. I can't recite what exactly she said after that because I just ignored it like always. But let me tell you, it's always just straight up bad. So I had a decision to make. Go to grandma and just straight up overstrain her since we all knew my aunt would scream at dad and I in the hospital or carry on with my plan for the weekend. The latter it was. She was fine again and as I said, I didn't want to upset her with everybody fighting in the hospital room. Three days ago, I got a picture of an opened letter, clearly addressed to me, with content also only meant for me. For some reason, all my official letters are sent to EA. In my country, it's against the law to open letters not addressed to yourself. But who cares about that? Well, not EA. I made a building loan contract a while ago without telling her, because why should I? So again, a lot of screaming. How dare I be doing anything without her knowledge? Fed up as I was. I just straight up asked her what right she has opening my letters again. Her answer? I don't care about anything you say anyways. You don't have to write me again. Oh well, I guess I found my new favorite phrase to say now should I see her. So two days ago I arrived back home. My boyfriend and I are visiting grandma. She was pretty much fine and we talked about any problems and she knew all of our names. Until, you guessed it, EA and EU also visited. At home, my grandma feared EA. She's living really close to granny and can't stand her guts. EA can't speak normally. She'll always have this demanding and hateful voice and grandma gets really stressed out even thinking about her. Mind you, she's already 85. Well, it was awful. Poor granny was so terrified she couldn't talk anymore, couldn't remember anything and was just flat out disoriented while smiling dumbfounded and ignoring most of the stuff EA said. Additionally, her ECG was all over the place as soon as she heard EA's voice. Almost like PTSD from her own daughter. It was pretty heartbreaking. It's common sense not to scream at someone in a hospital. At least it should. Not for EU apparently. I don't know what exactly happened as I wasn't present at this time, but dad was and told us of this. An awful person got an awful fitting partner it seems. Fast forward to yesterday. EA demanded dad to take a day off so he and I can talk to a doctor. Halfway there he gets a message from EA. He won't be needed anymore, she's already talked to him. Great. The problem with this is, I am the only one with a patient decree since my grandma does not trust EA at all with such decisions. And dad and I wanted the hospital to know how bad her state of mind and ECG worsened when EA arrived. Of course, the doctor can't talk individually to each family member and refused to talk to us again. We sadly don't know what EA told the doctor, but the one thing we know is it is not her place to say. Last I heard from her was how she demanded all of granny's pension and she wanted to manage it. A few things EA also did told me to work as a prostitute since I'm not worth anything, drop my boyfriend and date this random son of a guy she knows since they have money, snatched my child benefit and used it for herself, talked EU into paying for her liposuction, which was a total waste of money since she's weighing even more not even just two years later, pushed dad down the basement stairs, 
forced young dad to drop a former girlfriend with a disabled child since she thought it was not worth a relationship. Yikes. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I hear stories like this and they don't describe what they look like, I, I think I just have this perfect image in my head. And I'm curious to know, do you have that same image in your head or does everybody just subjectively project it as like a mismatch of all the people they've encountered in their life that are exactly like this? So uh, let me know in the comments what kind of person you visually think when you imagine an entitled aunt like this lady. Okay, so I work at an amusement park as character entertainment. Here's a little backstory. I work as a character from the Peanuts franchise. I was Lucy for this show and am known to be very sassy and entitled to an extent. We just finished our biggest show of the day and had a meet and greet by our stages. We are only legally allowed to be in character for 30 minutes at a time. The show is 15 minutes, so that leaves us with 15 minutes of meet and greet time. We always cut the line a few minutes before we have to go in, usually five or so minutes before. And we also announce when the line is cut and even have a 10 second countdown before we officially cut the line. Now we usually get a few people who come in after the line has been cut and they usually understand that the people in the costume are tired and need to go inside to get water until an entitled mum comes in. Lucy is me, that's my character's name. Entitled mum, EM. EMK, entitled mom's kid, not important. PP, party patrol, <laughs> PP. Bodyguard one, escort, person who helps take pictures. Bodyguard two, supervisor, literally one of the chillest people I have met. So we did the show, the pictures, the announcements for my line being cut, and the 10 second countdown. I was finishing up my line until EM comes in carrying her toddler with one arm and dragging her other two kids with the other. Sorry ma'am, unfortunately the line has been cut and Lucy has to go inside. Gives fake excuse to keep the charade going. Oh, but we're in line. I'm sorry, but our line was cut before you got in line. But Lucy will be able to give your children a quick high five or hug. Ugh, fine. Continues to stand there with a frown. EM then has an idea and leans down to talk to her children, not caring that Escort is right there listening. Okay, when they're about to leave, I'm gonna grab her and you guys go give her a hug. We're gonna take a quick picture, make sure she doesn't leave. Now, Escort hugs me and tells me what's gonna happen. Once I was done with my last picture, I wave at EM's kids and give them high fives. Both PP and Escort explain to her that if we give her children a picture, everyone else will expect one who would never be able to leave. She did not like that. EM then mutters, Darn all these white kids not letting me take a picture with the characters. They're all freaking racist. EM was black and was trying to pull the race card on us and would most likely get us in trouble. Keep this in mind. And walks away to see the other characters. Now she literally came in when our 15 minutes are almost over. So she misses three out of five characters to take pictures with. She does the same thing with the other characters and just gets more irritated. I was just chilling and getting changed, so my escort goes back out to help with the crowd. Escort notices one of our EM's kids were on our mini stages, so she politely tries to get them off. The child was probably less than five years old. EM comes stomping in and angrily shoves her to grab her child. Don't touch my kid. I got it, don't touch him. My escort apologizes and explains how it's dangerous for anyone to be on the stages since you could easily fall off the edge or something. EM was having none of this and calls her a racist for not letting her take a picture with Lucy. Keep in mind we had like one actual white person in our show. The rest were Mexican or Asian. Now EM stomps away and complains to one of our ushers who tells her to talk to our supervisor and points to him. EM sees my supervisor who is in business casual and was also black. So she thought that she could pull the race card with him and gets us in trouble. EM saunters to my supervisor with a smirk, kids in tow. Excuse me, all these darn white kids aren't letting me take pictures with the characters and are being extremely racist. Oh really? Please elaborate ma'am. Each character I go to, the host cuts the line. It's like they're purposely making sure I can't take a picture. Oh, I'm sorry you felt that way. But my associates aren't being racist. They're doing their job. And you do know it's, points to face, the black man cutting the lines, correct? They can't cut the lines unless I signal to them. We also had a whole 15 minutes for you to get in line to take pictures with characters. Now they all have to go. But if you hurry, you can take a picture with Sally since Snoopy's line has been cut. 
My supervisor described her face as a mixture of shock, anger, and confusion before she stomped off somewhere, not even bothering with the picture. Our supervisor told us to never worry about stuff like that. If it ever happens again, to just radio him and he'll take care of it. I packed my stuff and headed back to the break room and passed by her. She looked at me and the two people I was walking with, which were PP and Escort, and glared at us while we giggled as PP and Escort told me the story. It's pretty sad to see because she's using the race card as basically a way of trying to hold power over other people. Not only is that just an unkind way to treat other people, it's also like a boy who cries wolf situation. If everything becomes racist, then those times where somebody actually is racist, it's just gonna go unheard, and I don't think anybody wants that. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.